Hey everyone, I hope you're all having a good summer. I do apologize as my voice is a bit stuffy, but today I want to touch on a few topics that have concerned a lot of people who are into fireworks, such as firework classifications, federal laws regarding display and consumer fireworks in the United States, the American and European categories for fireworks, and a brief overview on how consumer fireworks make their way into production by the AFSL and CPSC. I will also lightly touch on illegal distribution for fireworks fireworks, and although firework laws change every year, the information should still withhold true for some time regardless of minute detail that I may have missed for covering in the future. Just as a disclaimer, I am not a lawyer, and do not use the information present as legal advice. Here is what I have researched, and hopefully it provides a good insight for different areas of application. Starting off with classification, chances are you have seen the orange diamond-shaped hazard logo on cardboard boxes for fireworks. This orange hazard logo is known as a placard or hazard indicator, and they are required labels by the Department of Transportation, or DOT for short. These labels of course are not anything out of the ordinary, as even gas stations have the same regulatory indication in place for gasoline and diesel. There are many different placards, but today we are only going to be reviewing the the one classification which regards fireworks. The orange diamond indicator present on consumer fireworks and display pyrotechnic cases is known as the Hazard Class 1 placard, responsible for marking any content as explosive such as fireworks, rockets, and even ammunition or TNT. Speaking of TNT, if you would like to know the difference between dynamite and firecrackers, please refer to my video on that. There are numerical identifications within the hazard labels, and before before classifying which type of firework goes onto which number, let's review what some of these numbers mean. The decimal presented is known as the division group. It is often mistaken that the larger the decimal, the more powerful the firework or explosive, but that is simply not the case as 1-1 is classified as a mass explosive. Right beside 1-1 one one is 1-2, one indicating a projection hazard, 1-3 representing a fire hazard, and 1-4 meaning no significant hazard. Believe it or not, there are also a 1-5 and 1-6 division, and the higher the number, it indicates that the explosive becomes more and more insensitive. There is additionally a strange letter present beside each numbered division, and this is known as the compatibility group, which is a little more complicated, but for instance, the G on the 1.4G classification code represents that the material contains a pyrotechnic substance, which is primarily used for fireworks in general. When the division and compatibility group are combined, it then becomes a classification code, and it can then be used to label material and await DOT approval. With that in mind, let's look at consumer, professional fireworks, and TNT, and give them a category. Starting with consumer fireworks, assuming a retail domestic firework goes through proper testing by the AFSL or American Fireworks Standards Laboratory and passes inspection by the CPSC or Consumer Product Safety Commission, a consumer firework will be labeled as 1.4G, neatly packaged, well presented, and sold around the 4th of July. When the product is out of regulated transportation by the DOT, a placard is no longer needed by law when driving consumer fireworks fireworks around from point A to point B, and no limit is present on how many consumer fireworks a person may buy, as the 1.4 division rigidly defines the product as possessing no significant hazard. Moving on, we have the 1.3 category. This indicates that the explosive material is going to be a fire hazard, but what exactly in terms of pyrotechnics are going to fall under this category? 1.3G fireworks are referred to as professional fireworks because they contain more content than a normal 1.4 consumer firework would. While 1.3 fireworks are known as display fireworks that include salutes and larger shells, it is also the first category to begin having strict regulation as the ATF will now begin to emerge. The ATF is a government-funded organization known as the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, and is by far one of the most hated organizations 
of all time. The 13G category is a rather strict category, and even the label at all times is required to have an explosive drawing on the placard. If you came to this category expecting gigantic firecrackers such as half sticks, M80s, and ground salutes, there are generally not any which are concrete 13G, because the manufacturing process in the states could fall under the 11G category. A short answer on firecrackers, they do exist but are very limited. 13 salutes can also not exceed around 70 grams or 2.5 ounces of flash powder, assuming the fuel it burns is non metallic. Since the 13 category progressively gets more strict on shell sizes, I won't be classifying any specific diameter shells it allows but there are in fact larger shells, salute cakes, oversized cakes, and very minute hints of firecrackers in its way. That being said, if you were expecting something like a strobe rocket or 7.3 flash powder firecracker, then it will be labeled as 1.1G. Any oversized firecrackers are rather very safe to assume 1.1G, because many builders prefer aluminum in the burst charge for their fireworks. 1.1G also spells out extra paperwork if if you plan on purchasing or storing, and the storage requirements are greater, as 11G indicates a mass explosive by definition, regardless if it is a pyrotechnic device without the intent of unimaginable destruction. American firework classifications fall under the categories of 14, 13, and 11G, but in Europe, the categories of explosives are F1, F2, F3, F4, P1, and P2. There are also the T1 and T2 categories, but they are for stage pyrotechnics, used much less than traditional fireworks. The category F1 for fireworks in Europe are the smallest of fireworks, where a minimum distance required for safety is of 1 meter. These may also be considered as indoor fireworks, because the danger risk they pose is too little. F2 also presents a low hazard and low noise level, but they are intended for outdoor use within confined areas. A great example of this would be Classics Micro Doom Boom, containing 0.38 grams NEC flash content. The F3 category are fireworks regulated under 120 decibels, and are also intended for outdoor use such as open fields and present a medium hazard. The Doom Boom 120 dB is a great example for this firecracker in this category because it falls just under 120 decibels. Category F4 is the last of the F category, and these are the fireworks that make a lot of pyros happy. They are intended for professional use, and they are much more volatile and hazardous. Some of these items may be Chipolas, larger Trueno Spanish crackers, Big Boy Profi, and Doom Boom 5G. Category P1 and P2 are a little more complicated, but think of P1 similar to F3, and the P2 category kind of like category F4. As you may already know, any 14G fireworks need to conform to CPSC as per regulation before undergoing any sales and manufacturing. The AFSL, on the other hand, is a nonprofit organization established in 1989, and their business is to simply address concern due to China failing to comply to requirements when importing consumer fireworks. Of course, salutes labeled as 14G may be one of their concerns, but their scope is actually far wider, as the AFSL cell looks at consumer firework standards and incorporates all of federal CPSC and DOT regulation. That being said, all new firework products are submitted to the AFSL for evaluation, and only then will the process be condoned by the factories with assistant training to produce the fireworks within the according guidelines. This of course goes for all categories of consumer fireworks in the 14G classification. 13G fireworks in the commercial aspect require an explosives placard card, but you do not need a placard if you are purchasing retail 14G, and this is exactly what the AFSL intends to ensure. As 14G products are allowed to the public, and people should be able to fill their cars to the brim without having to worry about a placard, since it is in non-commercial domestic quarters. Since the 13 category of fireworks are more dangerous, they are recognized as blast hazards, and there needs to be a distinct line between consumer and professional 
professional fireworks. The placard required on 13G product for commercial means of transportation needs to be placed on the left and right of the vehicle as well as the front and back. And it is also illegal if any placard is present on a vehicle if there is no explosive content present in means of transportation. In my video last year, I talked about how M80s are illegal, but this was taken slightly out of context because most states ban homemade fireworks. That being said, there are however states which hold an exception that unless you bring homemade fireworks outside of personal use, it is perfectly legal to make them and set them off on your own property. This does not mean that creating fireworks and setting them off is legal, period. It just means that there are some conditions in the United States States where it is legal without an FEL or federal explosives license. For instance, when shooting Tannerite, it is perfectly legal because mixing the oxidizer and fuel on site does not make it an explosive while in transportation. The ATF has big issues with explosive transportation under the table marketing, manufacturing, and storing. Expect to have big problems with the ATF if you unconditionally carry large firecrackers, rockets, or big items in your vehicle without an FEL and are considered explosive, as they cannot keep tabs on where and what items you have personally made, and you will be considered a terrorist against your own will. Assuming the explosive device does not undergo transportation in any vehicle, is discharged within the day you make it, will not be stored or dealt under the table, along with means of manufacturing for business purposes, the ATF has no jurisdiction, and it is up to the state to decide how to deal with it. Given hobby pyrotechnology are not a crime despite many rancid statutes. The worst felonies imaginable have to do with in violation of the ATF, and few lawyers will be brave enough to defend you given that they are up against the United States government, and it won't just be the company they work for, but everyone at stake. With federal law out of the way, the biggest hindrance here are your state laws, in tandem with not breaking the ATF's transportation, storing, or distribution laws. If you would like to take any loud fire crackers outside the personal use jurisdiction, possibly market them or transport them, then they require registry. Any self-made firecrackers undergoing transportation, manufacturing, or sales must be recognized by the ATF and logged on a journal instilled by the FEL permit and or state license. The ATF will give you a code and the device will be registered and classified as a destructive device. Along with additional details, as remember, Soft casings versus hard ones, such as a pipe bomb, are important factors the handbook will desire to know about. If you are not of age and do not want to wait till 21 to apply for a federal explosives license, you need to do it in connection with someone who is an FEL holder, and ask if it is okay to partake and maybe join them in a group shoot. They will know all the details and you will be out of any legal trouble. You do not need to be an FEL holder to press the button and launch a display firework. At that, the least you can do is asked to join, and you may also be granted with making as many fireworks as you'd like, depending on the group. If you wanted to do it all on your own without supervision, you will legally need to be 21, and you cannot abuse any permits which are not entrusted for those underage with energetic material within the business realm. Illegal fireworks distribution generally pertains to imported professional fireworks, and as already covered, any licensee may order 1-3 product at any time, and depending on the state, may require additional permits and licenses before firing. Of course, however, there are few certain people that like to make extra money be in violation of their FEL. This, of course, has to do with under-the-table dealing with getting display shells reachable to street pyros. It is not uncommon that some FEL holder will, as a matter of fact, go out of their way to deal display fireworks illegally on the street. The licensee will simply take the orders and have them imported. A middleman will take the shells, and they will illegally distribute it to you right on your doorstep. Well, of course that's a figure of speech, but go figure if you live in California, it may not be. If the licensee is bold, they will sell it directly, or if they're smart, they'll find a middleman who does not have a license, and they will illegally sell 
and distribute the shells with more profit than expected. Well, we have now wrapped up on classifications, requirements, and illegal distribution of different fireworks. I have probably missed one or two additional details, but I have made sure to thoroughly research all of the federal and state regulation for explosives, so hopefully you are more confident in knowing how the law works and will not make any mistakes as many others have. Do thank you for watching, as it really means a lot to support the channel. These videos do take time to make, and be sure to leave any comments as necessary, and I will see you all next time.